Thank you, Elliot. So Intel, whom you all think of as a world's leading microprocessor company, actually has a growing story in sports. And we're going to tell you today uh, how that came to be. Uh, it's a great story. Technology is changing everything that's happening today in sports. It's probably the biggest change since broadcast TV replaced radio. It's affecting how people view sports, the devices on which they uh, partake, how they share, how they talk about sports with their friends and colleagues. It's a complete revolution, and it's all being driven by technology. All of the companies you see here, many of them uh, based in Israel, are developing new technologies which are rapidly changing the whole landscape of sports and sports consumption and media content. Intel is determined to be uh, in the forefront of this revolution, and we have our, our secret, uh, secret sauce, which is helping us to get into all these three segments of broadcast media, some of which you just saw now, consumer digital, sharing and using more and more of this sports content on our, on our tablets and handhelds and, and PCs and, and other devices, and measuring how people, how athletes actually behave on the field. And the, the world and the fans are hungry for this data. And now I'm going to turn it over to my colleague today, Matteo, who's going to tell you the story of how we got to where we are right now, which is a great place to be, as you saw from the Super Bowl. Thank you, Joey. Um, so to introduce 3D technology, which is the world's first commercially viable volumetric video technology, uh, just to give you a bit of an insight of how science fiction can turn into uh, actual innovation, what we saw in Super Bowl 51 is the perspective of Tom Brady from his own eyes where there was no physical cameras. Um, this is volumetric video at its best, and let's see what 3D is as a starting point. So 3D, which stands for three-dimensional video, uh, is a technology that actually allows us to capture reality in, uh, uh, in all three dimensions. We believe that this will fundamentally change not only video and media, but reality and our perception of reality as we know it. Um, but going back to the roots of the story, uh, like all good, uh, like many good stories, uh, it started in an English pub after too many beers. Uh, the co-founders had this crazy idea of how can we revolutionize sports, and we came up with the notion of let's try to place a camera where there is no camera. And after toying around with this idea, uh, which back then was seemingly impossible, we essentially assembled a team of uh, drone experts from the uh, Israeli, uh, Israeli military workspace, uh, computer animation and visual effects specialists, and computer vision uh, scientists. A mix of people that conventionally doesn't go hand-in-hand uh, -hand together. And we basically signed a deal with the Olympics Committee, and we had less than 10 months to go before the actual 2012 London Olympics. Um, very brave, very bold, we simply ran like crazy and uh, had no choice other than success. Um, 
Seven months after the company was founded, we were actually able to make history, uh, go live in front of billions of people with uh, actual volumetric video rendering. If any of you saw it at the time, you probably had no idea what you were looking at in terms of technology, but at the London 2012 Olympics, we broadcasted the Vault event, and we used it. This is one of my favorite clips. We actually saw a comparison between the Japanese uh, Vault champion and the US Vault champion, Michele Maruni, and we've used volumetric video to create the exact same camera path for both of them and showed how the technique and the height, of course, of the US champion is much superior to that of the, um, uh, of the Japanese champion. So this is a showcase of how volumetric video can be used on uh, live television, specifically sports. So a little bit about how does it work. Uh, traditional cameras, or basically every kind of video as we know it, is, um, two, is essentially two-dimensional or flat uh, sensors capturing data, and we're seeing those back on our devices. 3D or volumetric video is an actual full volume capture of scenes using 3D reconstruction. Um, so we believe that beyond sports, beyond augmenting just broadcasts, the application of being able to capture reality as a volumetric scene and being able to experience with complete freedom is going to revolutionize things when coupled with the ecosystem of virtual reality and augmented reality. So Joey, a few words about this is... So this is exactly when the Intel and Replay saga began. Uh, I was out scouting for new technologies that would bring Intel into the next wave of, uh, of disruption, and I run into a company of uh, eight people uh, working out in a basement in, in uh, downtown Tel Aviv, and they have a demo that's actually being used uh, in the Olympics. And we start digging in, and I, and I find there's a team that has expertise in computer graphics, uh, in animation, uh, on the creative side in, in, in cinema, and deep, deep technology capabilities. We, we started a program that lasted initially for a year. Uh, we said, we're going to give you access to all of the top secret information about the microprocessors that Intel's going to do in, in the next three years. And let's together try and create an experience that we can do and actually bring to the, the major leagues and the broadcasters and, and make something out of it. So what do you do with a, uh, a camera that doesn't exist? I'm going to give you a peek here into what the merge of three-dimensional video uh, and virtual reality looks like. Uh, quite interesting. Here we go. And what's unique about this view is that with virtual reality and three-dimensional video and a camera that doesn't exist, you, meaning the person wearing the device, can be anywhere on this scene. You can walk out onto the field. You can move among the players. What you're seeing here is a, an early prototype of an experience that we're working on that we've been discussing now with all of the major leagues. Uh, we think this is going to be the, the content that makes virtual reality happen. A quick uh, snapshot of where things are today. So we're deployed in over 30 stadiums now. These are the customers. There's broadcasters, uh, media companies, all of the major leagues in the US, we're growing our footprint in Europe with uh, recent installations with uh, La Liga, Real, Bar Real Madrid, Barcelona. Uh, and this is all very, very much at the beginning. Uh, so just one last attempt to look at the super top secret, apparently we can't show you, <laughs> demo. Jay, can you try to play it again? We, the, the VR demo, okay. the VR demo was static. Here we go. Um, so what we're looking at here is an actual real live Dallas Cowboys play that was captured with um, 3D technology. You can see the user uh, simply immersing himself inside the scene. He's there on the, on the football court. Uh, here, it's a live scene from uh, Maracanã in Brazil. The user can decide to be inside the goal. Uh, he can move to other places in the field, he can decide to walk after Messi or his favorite player. Uh, it's true science fiction. 
coming to life with uh, volumetric video technology. So to summarize, um, replay technology, um, which had uh, which had big help during our round B from our crowd, uh, really became during the short time span the world leader in volumetric uh, volumetric filming. Um, we essentially established a practical standard where it comes to uh, where it comes to how to view uh, scenes interactively from personal or unique uh, video angles. We believe this is the next step in video evolution, that in the years to come, volumetric video is going to become uh, essentially the standard in every form of video from not just sports, but cinema, music videos, news, personal videos, everything is going to become immersive. Uh, we have 170 employees in four continents. We've installed over 30 stadiums worldwide uh, with the big help from Intel giving us the, um, giving us a push. We've won two Emmy Awards for Best Sports Technology, and um, one of our biggest achievements is that we've been able to strategically uh, combine forces with Intel, uh, combine strategies, combine initiative, and in 2016, we've became a part of, um, we've became a part of Intel. So, um, by the way, we are actively hiring. Yeah, we are, we are actively hiring, we're growing, growing the workforce, so, using the stage to say if you want to work on the coolest technology ever, we're hiring. Um, one quick clip to summarize the path that we've gone through in the past five years. I think it best uh, tells our story. So we were glad we were able to share with you this experience. Um, one last teaser, we're working on taking the notion of uh, building crazy innovative ideas into actual world-class leading technology. Uh, we're currently working on an open innovation platform that will enable 
innovators and technology experts to actually dream up their idea in a collaborative environment and help them achieve the pr process of taking technology from a crazy idea to an actual world-class technology. So thank you, everybody.